NASA's Artemis program, aiming for a lunar return, faces significant cost overruns with its space launch system, SLS, and Orion spacecraft. The SLS, developed at a cost of $23.8 billion, 2011 to 2022, is a non-reusable rocket incurring substantial costs with each launch. Boeing, the primary contractor, recently faced potential job cuts due to cost revisions. As a result, a more economical alternative is necessary. SpaceX's Gray Dragon plan, using its reusable Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets and Crew Dragon spacecraft, is proposed as a viable solution. This has prompted serious discussions about the program's financial viability. Concerns over the program's cost-effectiveness have led to potential job cuts at Boeing, the primary contractor. A more economical approach is now necessary to address these mounting budgetary pressures. SpaceX's Gray Dragon plan, which proposes a more affordable alternative using their reusable Falcon rockets and the Crew Dragon spacecraft, offers a potential solution. This plan promises a more budget-friendly approach for NASA's return to the moon. Dr. Robert Zubrin's Gray Dragon plan offers a potential alternative to NASA's Artemis program. The plan proposes leveraging SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Falcon rockets to achieve a lunar mission. This approach involves a two-stage launch sequence. First, Falcon 9 sends Crew Dragon into low Earth orbit. Next, Falcon Heavy's upper stage rendezvous with and docks to the Dragon, providing the necessary propellant for a translunar injection. Calculations show that this method provides sufficient Delta Viore for both lunar orbit capture and return. This plan potentially streamlines the lunar mission, reducing reliance on a single expensive launch system, offering a more efficient and potentially less costly alternative for achieving the Artemis objectives. The plan aims to deliver significant cost savings. Dr. Zubrin's plan for the Gray Dragon mission necessitates modifications to the Crew Dragon spacecraft for deep space travel. The current design is optimized for low Earth orbit, requiring adjustments for a lunar mission. These modifications likely include enhancing the spacecraft's heat shield and life support systems to withstand the stresses of a translunar journey. These adjustments would directly impact the spacecraft's capabilities and safety. The plan leverages the existing capabilities of the Crew Dragon, but requires upgrades. These crucial modifications are essential to ensure the spacecraft can endure the rigorous conditions of deep space travel, maintain the safety and well-being of the crew during the journey, and achieve the planned lunar objectives. This adaptation of existing spacecraft technology is aimed at optimizing resource allocation for the Artemis mission. The Gray Dragon plan leverages existing SpaceX technologies, like the Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon rockets, for a potentially more cost-effective lunar mission. This approach relies on established systems and proven technologies, streamlining the process. This alternative to NASA's current approach utilizes existing capabilities of the Crew Dragon and Falcon rockets, which have already demonstrated reliability in previous missions. By building upon existing successes, the plan reduces development time and costs associated with entirely new spacecraft designs. This innovative approach leverages existing infrastructure and proven technologies, potentially speeding up the timeline and reducing the overall financial commitment for the lunar mission. This strategy prioritizes efficiency and cost-effectiveness in achieving the lunar mission goals. A crucial element of the Gray Dragon plan is the efficient and reliable utilization of existing resources. The plan capitalizes on the proven capabilities of the Crew Dragon for various space operations. This approach optimizes resource allocation, avoiding the development of entirely new systems for the lunar mission. The plan's strength lies in its reliance on tested technologies. Leveraging existing spacecraft and rocket systems significantly reduces development time and cost. This strategy emphasizes the importance of utilizing already proven technologies in space missions, prioritizing efficiency and reducing risks. This reliance on existing technologies and the cost-effectiveness of reusing proven systems highlights an innovative yet pragmatic approach to lunar exploration. The Gray Dragon plan's feasibility hinges on the successful integration of existing spacecraft and rocket systems. This approach eliminates the need for entirely new technologies and reduces associated risks. The plan's efficiency hinges on leveraging the proven capabilities of existing spacecraft and rocket systems, 
including those already used in previous successful missions. This streamlined approach focuses on minimizing development time and costs, prioritizing the utilization of existing technology. The ability to adapt and integrate existing technologies is crucial to the plan's potential success, offering a more cost-effective solution compared to developing entirely new systems. This strategy emphasizes the utilization of proven technologies for lunar missions, highlighting a more economically efficient path towards achieving the program's objectives. The Grey Dragon Plan's success hinges on the thorough testing and validation of the modified Crew Dragon spacecraft. Rigorous testing is essential to ensure the spacecraft's suitability for deep space operations and mission success. This crucial step involves verifying the spacecraft's ability to withstand the unique challenges of a trans-lunar journey and lunar operations. Rigorous testing protocols will be required to address the unique stressors of deep space environments. Thorough testing ensures the spacecraft meets safety standards, addressing the significant risks associated with deep space travel. The validation process is crucial to ensure the safety and reliability of the modified spacecraft, providing confidence in its ability to successfully execute the mission objectives. The results of this testing phase will be crucial for gaining public and expert confidence in the plan's viability. Boeing has now lost $2 billion on Starliner, but still silent on future plans. Boeing announced Monday it lost $523 million on the Starliner crew capsule program last year, putting the aerospace company $2 billion in the red on its NASA commercial crew contract since late 2019. The updated numbers are included in a quarterly filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Risk remains that we may record additional losses in future periods, Boeing wrote in the filing. In 2014, NASA picked Boeing and SpaceX to develop and certify two commercial crew transporter vehicles. Like SpaceX, Boeing's contract, now worth up to $4.6 billion, is structured as a fixed price deal, meaning the contractor's on the hook to pay for cost overruns that go over NASA's financial commitment. That's exactly what happened. Boeing has registered losses on Starliner in its quarterly earnings report since 2020, months after the spacecraft's first orbital test flight fell short of its objectives. It has been a steady stream of losses or charges on Boeing's balance sheet since then. Boeing officials previously reported the company lost $375 million on the Starliner program in the first three quarters of 2024. Add in another $148 million hit in the fourth quarter, and Boeing's total losses on the Starliner program have reached $2 billion and are likely to rise more. A rough year. The most recent financial loss comes as Boeing reels from a disappointing test flight of the Starliner spacecraft last year. Boeing and NASA expected the test flight would set the stage for the spacecraft's final certification to begin operational crew rotation flights to and from the International Space Station. Instead, the Starliner spacecraft suffered problems with overheating thrusters and helium leaks after its launch last June aboard an Atlas V rocket. Despite the technical issues, the capsule delivered its two-person crew, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, to the space station as planned. However, numerous tests of Starliner's propulsion system in space and on the ground failed to convince NASA managers that more problems would not develop during the spacecraft's return to Earth. Boeing officials disagreed and asserted Starliner would bring Wilmore and Williams home, but NASA calls the shots on the commercial crew program and the space agency decided to leave the Starliner astronauts on the space station and return Starliner to Earth without its crew. The spacecraft parachuted to a successful landing in New Mexico in September. Meanwhile, Wilmore and Williams are still at the space station. They went outside the station on a spacewalk last week to complete routine maintenance tasks. NASA plans to return the two astronauts to Earth on a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft as soon as early April, although the exact schedule is unclear due to delays in readying SpaceX's Dragon capsule and odd statements from Elon Musk and President Trump last week. What's also unclear is when, or in what form, Boeing's Starliner spacecraft will fly again. One option NASA officials have considered is to fly a cargo mission on Starliner later this year, providing an opportunity to validate changes to the spacecraft's propulsion system. An alternative could be to proceed with certification of the Starliner spacecraft for operational crew rotation flights, even though the crew test flight last year was incomplete. 
The long-term future of Starliner is also in question. NASA's original commercial crew contract for Boeing included six crew rotation flights when Starliner is certified. NASA has formally given Boeing the go-ahead for only three of these operational missions. Meanwhile, NASA has extended SpaceX's commercial crew contract through the Crew-14 mission. Like Boeing's deal, SpaceX originally received a contract for six crew rotation flights, but NASA ordered more amid mounting Starliner delays. SpaceX wrapped up work on its original commercial crew contract in 2023 and is now executing on the extension. NASA plans to retire the International Space Station around 2030, so the opportunities are dwindling for NASA to use Starliner for all six of the crew ferry flights on contract. In November, Musk posted on X, there is no logical purpose to Starliner, given that NASA plans to deorbit space station in approximately five years.